up a new exhibition at the Museum of Fine Arts, which offers a rare view of what life was truly like in World War II ghettos. It's called Memory Unearthed and features the work of a Jewish photographer who risked his life to make sure the world could see exactly what was happening there. Arts editor Jared Bowen has more. In 1940, Jewish photojournalist Henrik Ross and his wife Stefania were confined to the Wuj ghetto in Poland. It was his job, per Nazi orders, to take photographs for Jewish identification cards, and for Nazi propaganda touting the ghetto's labor force. But he didn't stop there. Ross spent the next four years surreptitiously taking his own photographs. He was intent on making a record of the extermination of Polish Jews, and he risked his life to do it. One story he tells was sneaking into a tr to the train station storeroom and he disguised himself as a cleaner and there was a little hole that he was able to look out and get many of these deportation photographs. In Memory Unearthed, we find a comprehensive look at what Ross saw. An uncensored view of daily life, there are the images you expect and dread. It's really heart-wrenching. In fact, there's a photograph right behind me of this wagon filled with young children and it's being led out by horse and we know from what Ross recorded was that these children were being carted off to an extermination camp or to death camp and this little boy is looking out and he has a little you know it looks like a little smile on his face and it's absolutely heartbreaking to just think that because we know what happened after that. But then there are the photographs that surprise that, of course, life went on here. What you see is in the middle of these unbelievably deplorable, atrocious conditions that human beings lived. I don't want to sentimentalize it. This is a very, very, very hard life. Woodge was the second largest ghetto in World War II. As many as 240,000 people were ultimately detained here before it was liquidated by the Nazis. There were only 877 survivors, including Ross and his wife. As the ghetto was being liquidated, Ross and his wife buried his work. About 6,000 negatives they secured in iron canisters inside a wooden box. Roughly half his work was destroyed by groundwater. We see that the negatives have gone through a lot, and I think that parallels the suffering in the people in the photographs. Years later, after Ross decided to settle in Israel, he began assembling his own narrative of what he'd experienced and captured. The young and the old digging for food. The men and women ordered to carry out feces. He also documented some unsettling scenes, what some have deemed controversial, like this one of Jewish police carrying large bags of bread while others are starving. The Nazis are the folks with the power, and sometimes we forget that. Sometimes we look at the, you know, at the, at the way that the Nazis tried to exploit or build tensions within the, the Jewish community, uh, but they're forced into a choiceless choice. It's been said that Ross never took another picture after leaving the Woods ghetto. While that may not be completely true, his career in photography never resumed. This was such an intense body of work. It does seem like this is truly his life's work over these four years. Jared Bowen, WGBH News. Memory on Earth is on display at the Museum of Fine Arts through the end of July, and you can find more information online at mfa.org.